Hey there, Eli for MoboxGraphics.com. In this video we will try to make some plastic packaging, like you see on toys and many other items. If you take a quick look on Google, you can see people call it vacuum forming, which means that you heat plastic so it can wrap around the object you want to package. And we are going to do such thing in Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and make our object that we want to wrap. I'm going with the figure. It's kind of like a toy. And we need a base for this, which can be a plane object. So let's rotate this figure so it lays down. Maybe go in the side view to have a better view on this. You want it to float just above the floor or the plane. You want the plane at the bottom to be very large. You will see why in a minute. Now we need a second plane and we can try to make it more centered to the object. It doesn't need to be perfect. Let's also enable our lines so we can see what this is. And right now there are not enough segments to make the wrapping go very smooth, so it needs to wrap around this very tiny figure, which has a lot of curves to it, so every segment is already bigger than the curve. What we can do is adding more segments to this. You want to make sure they are square and also that your plane stays square. Um, that's the easiest way because we will be cutting off some edges later on and if it isn't square it will get hard in the end. Okay when that is done just make sure it is slightly above the figure. Make this plane editable and now we can right click, go in simulation tags and select the claw tag. Now for the other two, we don't need to make them editable. Just select them and right click again, simulation tags and choose the clot collider. Okay. When you click on the clot expression of the upper plane, you don't need to mess with the settings. The only thing you can do is going in the gravity and lower it to something like minus 500. This will make the plane drop way faster. So you only need one or two frames to make the calculations instead of 30 so it is faster for your computer. And also, because the gravity is so strong, it will actually suck itself to the lower plane down here, the big one. So let's try and press play to make the calculation. And after just two or three frames, you can already press pause to make it stop. Right now it is very rough, but you don't need to worry about that. Um, we can fix this with the subdivision surface and drag the plane inside of it. That makes it way smoother. Um, we can also already delete those clot tags so when you move the frames around it doesn't make the calculation anymore because we already have the model we want right now so just delete those. You can see some very minor problems because of the smoothing. Um, it's just very easy. Go and select the plane and use the polygon mode. Select the problematic polygons and we can try to move these up and maybe move these a little this way even scaling maybe It's just trying to make it fit. Okay, that one works. Let's go ahead and check this one. Okay The other hand as well Also, that is why I made the figure float above the other plane We can even disable this plane for now. We don't need it and let's just make this figure go a little lower so it isn't intersecting with anything of the other plane like this okay let's disable the subdivision so it is easier to see the polygons we can go in the top view and trim off all the excess edges you need to make sure you don't go where it curves of course leave a little room for it something like this looks all right i guess Yep, that looks okay. But that's typical about this kind of packaging is the rounded corners, because it is a very sharp material. Um, what we can do about this is going in the edge mode maybe, and selecting some of these edges. So we have a new square, and dissolving them by right clicking and clicking dissolve, or pressing M and N on the keyboard. Um, you can see I have these kind of cyan lines. These are the N-Gons. You can go to filter, 
and go to end gun lines and what this actually shows are the end guns which are lines that cinema 4d generates so the geometry is still correct so for example this point at this point all these four points are not correct how 3d geometry works so cinema does this for us so we don't need to look to edit but um, we will need these later on let's do this with the other edges as well okay um, now we would like to select the whole edge at the outer boundary so you can use the loop tool by pressing U and L on the keyboard but that isn't giving the right loops so you need to select boundary loop to make it work now with these edges selected you can make an extrusion downwards if it isn't going down you can go here and set the edge angle to something like 90 or minus 90 like this can go down quite a lot and now make a second extrusion which goes outwards maybe you need to set the angle again for mine it isn't needed it seems okay um, let's enable these subdivisions again and take a look this already gives us some nice rounded corners let's take a look when we render and you can see this is kind of messy it's uh, not exactly the smooth curve we are looking for and that is because of these end guns that are making a mess. Um, every polygon should have four sides. And right now it is actually having these six sides right here. A thing we can do for this is using the knife tool by pressing K and K again. And now you can go from this point and make a new square. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just something like this. So this section is already fixed right now. Let's see how we can make four more of these polygons maybe use this again and go ahead like this doesn't need to be perfect again and now we can make one connection from there to this corner and back to this corner so we have four sides on every one of these polygons which is perfect let's take a look when this is in the subdivisions again and that looks smooth now though so that is a good thing Let's also repeat this on the other parts. I'm going to speed this up for you so you don't need to wait. And if everything went well, there should be no cyan lines. So there's one here. That means that I made a mistake. I need this cut. Okay. Right here, the same story. One more cut. Also, no, that's the wrong one. like this okay so that seems to look nice right now perfect the next thing we can do is make this kind of cardboard that is below it the thing where it sticks on for the round corners it is best to go up here and select a rectangle and we can rotate this already and when you select the rectangle you can go down here and press rounding and you can also make it less rounded or more rounded however you like it let's also scale this appropriately and put it in place something like this will look fine I guess to make this into a real object and not just a line we can use an extrude object and drag the rectangle inside of it it is extruding to the wrong side now so let's get this 20 away and put it on the middle value let's make sure it is on the right height like this and the last thing for the model we need right now is this little cutout at the top so you can hang it in a store like you usually see it um, the easiest way to do this is creating a cube you don't need to worry about the scale right now make it editable so we can select this side make an extrusion of 200 centimeters so it is a perfect square again and now select both this side and the other side so we can extrude these again something a little bigger will do now go in the edge mode and select all the outer edges and use the bevel tool to make a nice rounding on it so you need a lot of subdivisions maybe six or seven and make it larger so it goes almost all the way around like this now we can scale this down and put this in place where we want the cutout and to make the actual cut we will be using a bool object and drag the extrude in there 
and the cube also. Make sure it is in the right position. And that makes the cut. Let's also make sure it is kind of centered. It doesn't seem to be like that. Okay. So that is the model itself. Okay, so next up is the material. So create a new one. We can actually disable the color channel on this one and go to the reflectance. We can keep the specular as it is, but maybe decrease the overall strength of it. Let's also add a new backman layer and we will also decrease the strength to something more like maybe 30%. Then down here we can increase the roughness to something like 8% maybe. The reflection strength also doesn't need to be that strong and all the rest can be as it is. Just down here at layer color we will set a texture which will be a Fresnel. Keep it as it is but just decrease the mix strength to 50%. Another thing we can do to make it more realistic is enabling the bump channel. This is because vacuum forming isn't exactly perfect so the flat parts aren't always exactly flat. So that is what we will be doing with the bump. Go to the texture and add a noise. And this one is a little grainy so we can click on the thumbnail and change the global scale to something more like 500% so it gets blurry. Let's also decrease the strength a little to maybe 10%. And that will do for now. Let's drag this on top of it. And of course you can see it isn't exactly transparent. And I could just use the transparency with some kind of refraction on it. Like this. But you can see this makes the figure inside of it look very strange. Kind of like it is sticking to the plastic itself. And it also makes it look bigger. And I don't want that. So um, I will disable the transparency again and instead what we can do is right clicking on the plane going to the cinema 4d tags and clicking display and with the display tag selected you can go down here and check the visibility and this will actually be some kind of artificial transparency like you would do it in photoshop as a layer instead of a object with reflections and all that kind of stuff i don't need right now let's set it to something like 15 percent maybe Let's take a look. And that makes it more transparent as I would expect it to be in real life. Okay, I'm quickly going to create some materials for the figure. Maybe also add some kind of texture to the background. Maybe this better. Like that. Let's see. Okay. To make it more convincing and realistic, we obviously need shadows, reflections and more light overall. The first thing we can do is creating a sky. And you can search your own HGRI images and apply it to that. Or we can go to create material, load material presets, prime presets, light setups, HGRI. And right here you have a lot of options to choose from, but I will go with the photo studio. So let's drag that on the sky. And this will give us more reflections like this. The second thing we can already do is grouping the object itself. Let's rotate it so it's standing up straight. That's easier for the lighting. And I will be adding an area light with some area shadow on it as well. Let's make it bigger and move it to the back and up a little. Maybe even to the side and rotate it so it is actually angled towards the scene. Another thing I'm going to do to make it really reflective from every angle is making a cloner object and we will create a light for this to put inside of it. And for the light we will be decreasing the intensity and also we don't want it to actually light the scene, we just want the specular reflections on the plastic. So what you can do is disabling the diffuse and the GI illumination so it isn't actually giving light. For the cloner itself we also need to set this up to the radial mode and we can increase the count to maybe 12 lights or something and we need to set the plane to XC to make it flat or horizontal and of course the radius needs to be a lot larger so it is actually around the object. Maybe 
1500 centimeters is a good option. Let's keep it somewhere in the middle of the scene or the object. Let's take a look again. And that gives us a lot of reflections on the edges to make it more realistic. The last thing you can do to compensate this kind of shadows right here is adding a new Omni light and placing it somewhere closer. Just a single one, like this. And let's see what this gives. You can see that kind of counters the hard shadow that was behind the figure. Of course you can use your own lights as you want it, but this way we get the effect we wanted of the vacuum formed object and also the transparent plastic material around it like it is in real life. So when you make more of these you can make some nice scenes like in a shop and make it look really nice. I hope this will be useful for your own projects if you want to see more Cinema 4D videos, you can leave a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in some next videos.